Hallelujah. Well, God bless you this morning. Good to see everybody here. Uh, I'm excited about uh, just everything that God's unfolding, the sign of the time. I'm excited about the church. I'm excited about where God's moving. And regardless of where we're at with uh, this uh, uh, issue that we're under in re with, you know, uh, shutting us down it with not giving us the ability to be able to just be liberated and be normal again. That's coming. But what we do is we have to operate according to our situation. <clears throat> of course, uh, you know that uh, the state, and it's a good word for it, the state has uh, kind of trapped us into not able to uh, walk in public uh, unmasked, well, that's coming to a point in time where eventually it's all going to be gone. And I'm telling you that all of this stuff will quell in November. Uh, take my word for it. Uh, right now, there's a powers to be that are trying to shut down what we're doing as a, a public people and stop uh, the move of God because we're in a battle church. And I'm not talking about the government. They can go do whatever they're going to do. We, the church. The evidence of the up and coming underground church is alive and well. That's what we're seeing. This is just a taste of uh, where eventually the world's going to head to turn us into an underground church. And um, knowing China, knowing uh, people that are in China, that have been to China, etc., they have a public church that comes under the uh, firm grip of the communists and then they have an underground church that operates in liberation. That underground church is the true church. And uh, they understand what sacrifice is and who Christ is. Well, I want to talk about um, a new foundational path. I've been talking about the history of mankind, of America, of where we're at as a people, uh, the church, but I want to talk about a new foundational path. I don't want to take a lot of time. I'm realizing that the longer I speak, the more boring and uh, tired you get. So I don't want to wipe you out. Uh, so I'm trying to, you know, bring my my words to a point where you're not going to fall asleep on me. Amen? <laughs> There's a, a, a board going around that Pastor Tony Moreno is going to pass around. It's a sign-up for the conference so that you can help us out, okay? So if you would uh, look at that, and if you're going to be in the conference in the daytime, uh, sign up for whatever we have operating in the day, and in the nighttime, please do so as well. Uh, we love to have your help, participation, but we want a lot of people so that nobody is going to have to do it more than a day or that period of, of time slot, okay? <clears throat> the conference that's coming, uh, the, the men that I have invited are very, very powerful. Uh, the, the title or theme is Supernatural Revelation. Supernatural is really ideal for where we're at. Revelation is being able to pull something out of the Word of God that we've not seen the way that it's being expressed. So that's a revelatory action that I'm expecting out of the men of God that are going to be preaching. And we have some good ones. 
And then that uh, following Sunday after the conference, Pastor Coney Orozco is going to be here. Powerful man of God with uh, really supernatural uh, activity in his life. Uh, really operates powerfully in the healing. So I encourage you, if you're sick, you come, get prayed for. Genesis chapter 6, turn there with me. Genesis chapter 6. I'm going to the 13th verse, and I want to talk uh, about Noah. Noah kind of, uh, to a degree, operated in the, I'll say, one of the first new foundational paths. Okay, we know who Noah is. He's uh, the man of God that built the ark, and all the animals uh, two by two went onto the ark, and Noah and his family, they were saved at the flood. The flood came in and killed all of mankind except for Noah and his family. So God spoke to Noah, and that's what I want to talk about is how he came in and the who, what, where, when, whys, and hows of Noah's direction and why everything happened the way it did. And in your life, what's going to happen the way it should, according to the Lord. Uh, verse 13. And God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark covered inside and outside with pitch. And this is how you shall make it. The length of the ark is going to be 300 cubits. Its width, 50 cubits. Its height, 30 cubits. Cubit is a foot and a half. And uh, you shall make a window for the ark, and you shall finish it to a cubit from above, and set the door of the ark in its side. You shall make it with lower second and third decks. And behold, I myself am bringing flood waters on the earth to destroy from under heaven all flesh in which is the breath of life. Everything that is on the earth shall die. But I will establish my covenant with you, and you shall go into the ark, you, your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives with you. And of every living thing of all flesh, you shall bring two of every sort into the ark to keep them alive with you. It shall be male and female. Of the birds, after their kind, of animals, after their kind, and of every creeping thing of the earth, after its kind, two of every kind, will come to you to keep them alive. And you shall take for yourself of all food that is eaten, and you shall gather it to yourself. It shall be food for you and for them. Thus Noah, Noah did according to all that God commanded him, so he did. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you uh, for your lesson. I thank you for the directives that you laid out in Genesis and uh, all that you're doing on the earth right now. And I thank you for wisdom and uh, the prophetic word and revelation. And we uh, bless this word in Jesus' name. Amen. In Hebrews 10.25, it says this, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as it is in the as it is the manner of some but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching okay as you go to hebrews 10:25 it says i don't want you to forsake the assembling of yourselves together that's this operation and when we have bible study and when we gather to uh, join with one another at each other's homes to have something to eat. And uh, he says, I don't want you to drop by the wayside and not be connected. And he said, and I want you to do this even more so as you see the day 
approaching. What day? This day. This is a prophetic word that gives a directive to this time. It's a prophecy that operates with this body of believers, the church as a whole, the church on the earth. God is saying, you need to be connected as that day approaches. That day is now, church. It's approaching. We don't know. We can all die and then Jesus come back. I don't know. I'm not going to guess as to specifically when, but I do know it's coming. So when he says this to us, what he's trying to do is warn us, be on the alert, okay? The enemy, it wants to isolate us, agreed? It wants to divide us and then conquer. The uh, Wuhan virus purpose is to isolate mankind. Now we know China let it loose by accident or on purpose, doesn't matter, it's loose. It went out and unfortunately in Wuhan, they had uh, the people that lived there, this virus broke loose in this uh, county area, state, whatever it's called, of China. Once it got out, the Chinese scientists understood that this virus passes from person to person, okay? So they shut down the borders in this Providence, is what it's called. A very large city, so they closed it off. Very smart, good thing to do. They have an international airport in Wuhan. And they allowed that airport to operate internationally. So these people, as demonic as a human being can be, said, let them all loose, but don't let them loose in China. You're not allowed to go past the Wuhan Providence borders, but I want you to let everybody just go. I don't care who's infected and who's not, but let it happen. They, uh, I don't believe, are smart enough to know how it was going to affect the world, but they didn't care. This is communism. This is the mindset of the demonic entities that we have to deal with. And it's operating in our cities right now and it's getting loose. Point is, is that this happening, now it's out there. So what does it do first off? We all panic, everybody, the, the government does the best they can in America, try and shut it off. Too late though. So it gets loose in our country, gets loose in Italy, in a devastating fashion. Why Italy? Because at that time, China in Wuhan had a yearly celebration where everybody comes in, they get together, and they have this celebration. Italy has a huge percentage of its population in northern Italy that is Chinese. Nothing wrong with Chinese, Mexicanese, whatever is, don't matter. Point is, is that they went to this gathering. Then China said, just let them all go home. They went to Italy and the most devastating area that took place is in Italy. Italy was harmed more than any nation on the earth. So all these people got it got get, uh, very, very ill, many died, etc. All this stuff going on. Okay, so now, with this happening, we see that the, the disease comes in, the states all operate according to their own 
principle. The United States says, okay, this is what I want the nation to do, but the states have the ability to do whatever they want to do to help quell the disease. So they did this, okay? Went out, everybody had their own reasons. Uh, I think it was South Dakota didn't have any restrictions. And they just said, just be careful, uh, try to social distance, be wise about it, but don't, uh, don't allow it to stop what you're doing and operate normally. They did that. Well, the state in all the nation that had the least problem with this Wuhan virus is South Dakota. They allowed them just to function. Well, lo and behold, they, they came in and they said, okay, first we have to shut everything down. So they did that for a month, two months, whatever the March, April. Then they said, okay, it's calmed down. We see it leveling off. If it levels off, then we're going to loosen everything and you're going to go back to normal. Well, as the devil would have it, he thought, hmm, they were really functional and obedient in the way that they operated, that they did everything we told them to do. Now we can tell them whatever we feel because we, every governor, is in charge. So each state governor now became the, uh, the police, the chief of police, so to speak. So then they released and did whatever each state wanted to do, whatever. Then once those two months went by, they gave leeway. Then they saw in other states, some areas, the numbers went up. Other areas, it went down. So as a whole, certain states that were ran by certain governmental officials said, okay, now we're going to tell them no. And then uh, they can wear a mask or not. Now, like Colorado, in public, you better wear a mask or else, or else, I don't know what that means. But that's what happened, okay, agreed? I'm not, I, I'm telling you specifically how it all is going. So with that happening, there are certain entities that were the devil utilized to say, do not let churches gather, right? And when they gather, guess what? They can gather, but it must be 10 people at a time. There are very few churches that are 10. So their mindset is, uh, these Christians are very irritating, and these Jews we don't like them, and we want to get rid of them, and we want to bring a liberation into our good-natured arenas of life because these people are no good. They didn't care what color you were or nationality. All they wanted was to shut down God's move. How do I know that? Because 48% of the population, maybe 46 I think it's 46 now, are pro-abortion of the United States. 46% of people are pro-abortion. So 54% are anti-abortion. That's you. And now, you know, I don't know where you're all standing in any of that, but I know you know what God is saying. That's how I, I think. What God says, that's what I follow. Point being is they began to divide. They began to cause us to freak out. They began to make us worry that we don't want to get the Wuhan. 
So you can't get the Wuhan. The reason I call it Wuhan is because I want to dig at the devil's uh, tool. You could call it the COVID-19 if you want, but I call it the Wuhan because I want to dig at what the devil's doing. Okay, so now divide and conquer and isolate. So he's bringing fear to us to make us think, oh my God. Now don't kid, my, kid yourself, the virus is real. And it is real. And it can kill certain people. But the numbers of death have dramatically dropped. I mean super dramatically. Way, way down, but they're not telling us that. I'm looking at numbers all the time. I'm reading, watching this. I'm constantly. So I'm not going to misguide you. That's my responsibility for you because I'm your shepherd. Okay, so now let's get into what the word is saying. The devil's intention is to make us complacent, lazy, and inactive. Thank you, dear. Agreed? And that's easy. Personally, I'm a worker. I cannot, I'm not OCD or any crazy thing, maybe, but like, like when I have all my kids at the house, I can't wait till they get out the door. Not because I don't love them, because I could pull out the vacuum cleaner <laughs> and I could start dusting the, the pillows and, and shaking any kind of, any article that's in the house and sweep the kitchen and, and dust out the rugs and that's what I do. But the point being is that I love them to come, but I want to take care of business so then I could sit in my easy chair, and I do have an Archie Bunker chair. <laughs> you don't, never mind. But the point is, is that I love it. It doesn't bother me. You could call me whipped or whatever. Josie, get out of my way, and she does. She goes and dives on the bed. She hides out once everyone's gone, and then I'm <laughs> and fi finish up. I can't sit. So I will not get lazy on myself or on God. I'll go downstairs and study. I'm always listening to things on YouTube. I'm always watching stuff religiously on TV, watching the news. I'm, and Josie and I, that's just what we do. You know, uh, so constant. You need to be constant, church. Do not let the devil make you lazy. Don't just sit down. Do something. Begin to function. Build your house so that it's a house of glory. And when people come into your house, it's like, whoa, man. And then they don't want to leave. I mean, they just get in there, they'll relax, they'll get on the couches, and it's like, I want a vacuum. <laughs> Build your sanctuary, church. Redesign it to be a God house. It doesn't matter if you're clean or if you're uh, messy or whatever. I don't care about that. Even if I go to your house, I don't care. I want to just go to your house and, and be at peace. But I'm going to take my sanctuary with me. The anointing walks in when I walk in. You, the anointing should be walking in when you walk in. You need to be anointed, church. We must be a people that are not complacent and are not trapped by the enemy. And even if we're out fishing like Gil likes to do, we are, God's with us, and you know God's with him and Denise because they always have a bunch of fish. But do they offer us any? I'm not asking him for any, but, but the point is, church, as in the days of Noah, 
I just read you Noah. What did God say, church? In Genesis 6, 9, I didn't read that, but it says, this is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God. Okay, the, the earth was inundated with the Wuhan, so to speak. The spiritual dynamic of complacency, laziness, and ignoring the Almighty. Because we got so used to doing whatever we feel was good to do. That's what happened in Noah's day. Jesus tells us to be aware that when the day of Noah comes, you better get on your stick. The day approaching, like I read in Hebrews 10.25. Okay? So it says this, uh, Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God. Okay? This tells us something. Who is Noah? Church, Noah was a just man. Agreed? So, right now, church, I would bet my bottom dollar that you're just people. I believe that. I believe that the body of believers in this church, you people, are just like Noah. But the devil wants to change our thinking to become unjust. So his objective is to divide and conquer. How does he do that? He, the devil right now in America is dividing us politically. He's dividing us socially. And he's dividing us spiritually. The spiritual division comes where people say, and, I, and there's nothing wrong with this church. Do not get me wrong. You do what your convictions say to do. But it's to a degree that we are afraid to go to church because we don't want to get infected. Well, people will do that to themselves. Then they isolate and they become discouraged, depressed, and this dynamic begins to happen in us where then we do not want to socialize. So we'll pull back. There's the danger, okay? Why did Noah make the decision to listen to God, church? Why did he do this? Look at Genesis 6.13. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Two things. Number one, is God said. The first thing is God spoke to Noah. God wants to revelate to the body of Christ. He wants to speak to you. He cannot speak to you if you're not speaking to him. He cannot speak to you if you're not reading of him. He cannot speak to you if you are not inundating yourself like Josie and I do in our home of him. Don't get me wrong, our home's not perfect, we have arguments, I'm always right, but the point being is that we have issues, all days. Okay, now, the point is, is we build a sanctuary, build your sanctuary, okay? You must begin to learn to do that. How do you do that? Simple. Just put music, worship music on if that's all. Read your word in your home openly. Make it a quiet time where everybody in the house knows this is reading time. Josie does that. She says, Michael, this is my 
reading time. So for an hour, she reads the Word of God. And so that is an established time. I do not bother her. So establishing, you must do that. Then you must begin to teach and train everyone around you that, no, you can't bring uh, whiskey and booze in my house. No, you can't. I, I know. If you want to smoke weed, do it down the street. But don't do it in the house. Don't even do it by the window, because then I get high. So please, back away. I'm, so I'm saying is that there are people that will come to your homes that do this, but you have to have an order, and they will then begin to respect and honor that order. Or uh, the way that you live. They're going to live they're, when they come to uh, uh, Tony and uh, Marguerite's house, they know, oh, at the sidewalk, I can't take my whiskey in. So they leave it in their trunk or whatever. So there's guidelines, okay? You're not a jerk about it. You're still having influence and relationship with them, but you're not allowing them to take you over divide and conquer. Wife doesn't like it, husband doesn't care. Divide and conquer. Then arguments ensue. So this is where you've got to have unity in your word together in your home. If you're not married, then you do it with your children. If you don't have children, then you just establish that with your friends. Agreed. Okay, so Noah made this decision to listen to God, number one, because God said, and the other obvious is God said, I'm going to destroy all mankind. It's like, hmm. Somehow, Noah knew this was the voice. This was God. He knew that the I am had come down and settled things with him. He knew it. And he knew it to a degree that for how, however many years he built this ark, he still built it no matter what people said, he built it. It's like Josie and I. Years ago, uh, the people that we went to church with, uh, we said we don't go to R-rated movies. And they began to mock me. And they would tell me I'm whipped, etc., but we would be looking at the paper, deciding what movie to get, to watch, to go to. This is when we didn't have our TV at home. They didn't either. So we'd go to the movies, and we wouldn't watch certain movies. And they'd come, and, and us men would make the decision. And then they'd call me a wuss, and uh, you're a sissy, man, etc. But I had my established anointed authority and power. And I said, you could say what you want, but this is what I'm going to do. I'm the man of my house. I make the decisions. This is my call. Even though Josie told me you better not. No, I'm kidding. We had agreement. But as we go a little further, we see the obvious happening. In Noah listening to God, what were his steps to follow the Lord? Number one, he followed instruction. And number two, two he understood the consequences. The instruction is, up here, don't watch my granddaughter. The instruction is, is that he said, God said, the obvious, I, like I'd said earlier, the uh, understood consequence was you will die with the rest of them. Your consequence is God saying, establish as a child of God, don't go beyond that bridge. I have this for a reason because eventually the Wuhan is going to be nothing compared to what is coming upon the earth. So this is just training. So you must train, prepare, get ready, and get uh, established. And you need to understand the consequences are not that you're going to die right now, 
but you will begin to deteriorate in sin. You will become depravity. What that's going to look like is uh, little by little, the sickness and disease will get upon you. What's that sickness and disease? It's pulling back further and further away from God, and sin begins to attach more and more to you. So that's why we do what God's telling us. Why is it that we follow, and what's the reasons that we follow? Why, church? Isaiah 43 says this, okay? Check this out. And th these are in your uh, bulletin if you want to pick them up later. Um, but it says this, Isaiah 40, verse 3. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. This is a word Isaiah stated. John the Baptist utilized this word when he came into the open uh, conflict with people that didn't want to follow God, that were living in the days of Noah, doing whatever they wanted to do. John the Baptist came in and said that he's come to, or Jesus said he has come to prepare the way. And so John the Baptist came to prepare the way. You're having to come to begin to put away in your home and in your friends in the relationship. Don't worry about where they're at politically, church. Don't let that be a burden on you. Just know that you are there to prepare the way. Give them good word. Don't sit there and argue with them. People won't argue with me because I'm a man of fact. I have tons of facts why I believe the way I believe. So bring any issue to me, and I can factually give you why I believe what I believe. But my purpose isn't to pound it into you. It's for me to be secure that I am not going to be inundated by the Wuhan, the spiritual Wuhan that's causing depravity in our thoughts and in our spirit and in our mind. Okay, let's go further. I want to uh, give you this balance from Calvary, or I, rather from Gethsemane to Calvary. Gethsemane is where Jesus prayed. Calvary is where he died. So where that is, church, is in Gethsemane, God is wanting us to come to a place where we are prayerful and regardless of where we're going to get uh, fed to or walk to, we are ready to take the hit. Christ was ready to take the hit. He prepared himself to take the hit. He went to Gethsemane, and he was there to a degree, to a degree, church, that he was so inundated by the detractors that he sweat blood. And this is an actual phenomenon. I can't remember the scientific name of it, but Christ sweat drops of blood. So much pressure had come upon him. Church, that's what the devil's trying to put on us. So much pressure that we're unwilling to take a stand. That we're unwilling to say who we are. That we're unwilling to, to, to take all that's going to come to us to say, no, this is what I believe. Now, you're not doing it so that you can fight. You're doing it so that you are right. You must be right about your convictions. Amen? I have a sign in the front of my house, and everybody in my neighborhood hates it. But I don't, it's okay. I talk to them still. 
they'll go by and say, oh, good morning. And I make a point that I'm there. I'm sitting on my porch in the mornings, reading, listening to the word, studying, and they'll come by and I'll stand up so they'll know I'm there. I'll say, good morning. Oh, good morning. How are you? Good, good. And they go their way. Plus, I don't want their dog pooping on my grass. <laughs> but the whole idea is, is that Regardless of what people think, my convictions are going to stand and I'm going to support my directive. And I can support it. You must learn to support your conviction. So what does that mean? You need to know the Word of God. Okay, let me get near to the end of this. <clears throat> we need to have keys to the kingdom, agreed? We have to have those keys to open up the mysteries of the things of God. And that's why we have them. God has given us keys. We have to use those keys to open up the doors of treasure. And those doors of treasure are valuable to us. I'm going to talk about four things in my closing. I want to talk about church's purpose, calling, position, and destiny. The church's purpose is Psalms 2.8. Ask of me, and I will give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. This is foundational to you as a child of God. Ask of who? Him. This is, church, where we stand as a body of believers in our purpose. Very simple, Psalms 2.8. You've got to remember that. The second arena is his calling. The church is calling. And that's Matthew 20.28. 20, Just as the Son of Man came, not to be served, but to serve and give his life a ransom for many. Powerful word. So, what's our mindset? We're here to serve you. Oh, I'm not going to serve everybody the right way, maybe. I'm not going to make everyone happy. I'm not going to invite everybody to my house. I'm not going to touch all bases because I'm fallible. He's the only one that's infallible. But you have to follow by my uh, standing, insight, integrity, and uh, anointing. And not because I'm any special guy, but because you trust me. Simple. That's all. I'm not here to hurt you. I'm here to show you I can be trusted. And my position is our position as a church. Second Chronicles 2.17. This is in the New Living Translation. Listen to this. But you will not even need to fight. Take your positions. Then stand still and watch the Lord's victory. All you need to do, you don't need to fight. You just need to take your position, the Lord's position. The Lord will fight for you. What's the Lord's position? Knees. The neology of man. You must be neologized. Amen? We got to be on our knees. Your form of being on your knees couldn't be on your back, maybe, in bed. Could be on your chair, sitting down. Could be on your face, laying down. Could be on your knees. It don't matter. But what matters is the communication between the Father and you. That's all. And then our destiny. Psalm 37, 23. The foundations. Or let me, rather yet, let me read Psalm 11, 3 through 7. The foundations of law and order have collapsed. Sound familiar? 
Check the, listen to this really carefully because this kind of uh, puts to bed what's going to, on today. The foundations of law and order have collapsed. What can the righteous do? Us. What can we do? But the Lord is in his holy temple. We got to go to church whether we get arrested or not, church. I'm coming, like it or not, governor. Like it or not, uh, uh, Congress. I'm coming to church. I have to. Now, granted, there may come a time where uh, they're going to be uh, riding the streets and we're going to have to do it hidden. But we're going to do it. The next thing is, is the Lord still rules from heaven. Hello. He's still in charge. The devil thinks he's winning. Uh, these people that are against my beliefs think they're winning. But guess what? God still rules, baby. Like it or not. Sorry, Charlie. Hope there are no Charlies here. And then he says this, he watches everyone closely examining every person on earth. Whoa. God is watching us closely and examining everybody, bad and good. Heavy. So this is where we, where we have to come in. The Lord examines both the righteous and the wicked. He hates those who love violence. Hello! He hates, though God hates, He hates those that cause violence. You know what? If you're an abuser and being violent on your spouse, God hates you. Oh, no, but God is love. Well, you figure out what the word says then. Heavy. So those of you that are abusing, better check your heart at the doorway and get your life right because you're a dog. Bring it on, baby. My boy's got guns. He hates those who love violence. Verse 6. He will rain down blazing coals and burning sulfur on the wicked, punishing them with scorching winds. I'm telling us the truth that God is telling us, you go ahead and go out and riot. God hates it and God will repay. Oh, yeah, we talk so much from the pulpits about love. Give me a break, church. God is a God of justice also. Oh, yes, he loves. Thank God he loves. He loves so much that he gave his only begotten son, put him on a cross. So with all of this together, okay, he says this. For the righteous Lord loves justice, and the virtuous see his face. Church, let's seek him. Let's find his face. Let's bring his face before us, regardless of our sin, regardless of how we have lived in the past. Let's begin to seek him, okay? Man, I love God. And I thank him because he is love. He is justice and he is forgiving. Thank you for forgiving me. I'm a wicked man. And thank you for forgiving my wickedness. I don't take it for granted. And we sh should not. Amen. Let's close our, our eyes right now and bow our heads in sealing this off. Oh, what a good God, church. He loves you, man cares about you, and he wants to bless you and help you. Father, I pray for the body of Christ. And I pray that I did not give uh, 
enough love to the word today. And I pray I gave enough of your justice and your love. You're a God of love. We understand that. But you're also a God of righteousness, right living. Father, help us with our sin. Today, I'm just going to ask you to open your heart for the nature in you of sin. I want you to repent for just a moment. A minute's time. God, forgive me for being who I am, for the things I said, for the things I've even thought, for the evils that are in my spirit and life, for the way I'd been in the past. Forgive me. Fix me. Fix me. Fix my mess. Help me to be righteous. And Father, let me learn to follow these guidelines you put in my heart to feed to the body. We love you, Father, and we thank you. I thank you for the body of believers here. I thank you for who they are. Church, I'm going to ask you right now to stand just for a moment. Hallelujah. Oh, man. I'm going to ask you not to touch each other's hand, but just spiritually reach your hands to your side toward the neighbor. Pray for them right now. Pray that the love of God would help them. Pray that their uh, difficulties would be fixed. Pray that they would be helped in their walk. Pray that they would be helped in their home. Pray that they would be helped with their children and each other. And pray in their loneliness that they would no longer be lonely. Father, I bless the body of Christ. I bless today. And I bless this time. I bless you. In Jesus' mighty name. Bless them. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. And Father, as we close today, I'm going to ask you to seal our hearts and seal this time. And seal our words in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I want you to look at each other right now and you, the row you're in and just uh, give each other a smile. Come on, give them a, a happy mask smile. As we leave today, just uh, make sure you love somebody and make sure that you put your mask on when you walk out the door. And uh, man, thank you for being a part of my life. Now, if you have those cards for Sash, Janet, and Isaac, Make sure you give them to Roman at the back. And if you don't give them to him, give them to Josie. And also just, uh, there's that other sign-up clipboard. Pass that back to whoever it needs to get to, Pastor Tony. Amen. Love you guys. Now, I want you to turn and love somebody. Have a wonderful Sunday. God bless you.